اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد سلام عليكم يا علي مدن. As we know, we have started a new series of lecture about the history and fazail of the 14 Masumi. In my last lecture, I gave a brief introduction about Bibi Fatima Zahra, salamu alayha, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. And in my previous lectures, we also talked about our Prophet. Today is my third lecture, and today we will discuss about another Masum. Today we will discuss about Imam Ali, alayhi salam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. It is one of my favorite subjects when it comes to Imam Ali because the fazail and history of Imam Ali are extremely interesting to listen and to talk about. So before I begin, please recite a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. As we all know, Imam Ali is the first Imam of all the branches of the Shia. Imam Ali is the cousin and the son-in-law of our Prophet. He is the husband of Lady Fatima. He is the father of our second and third Imam, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. The rest of the Imams of the Shia come from the descendants of Imam Ali. According to Shia historians and many Sunni scholars, he was born inside the Holy Kaaba and that is why we call him Maulud Kaaba. Based on evidence from the Quran, Hadith, and history, the Shia believe that Imam Ali was the direct designated successor of our prophets. Us Shia, we have proof from Hadith, Quran, and from history that Imam Ali was the direct designated successor of our holy prophet. Some verses of the Holy Quran point to his infallibility. According to some Sunni sources, Roughly 300 verses of the Quran point to his infallibility. But us Shia, we believe that it is 1,000 verses in the Holy Quran that were revealed with regard to his virtues. We Shia, we believe that it was 1,000 hadith, 1,000 verses from the Quran that are related and that were revealed with regards to his virtues. But you need to understand that for Sunnis, it's 300. They believe it's 300 verses from the Quran that were brought and that were revealed regarding the virtues of Imam Ali. But us Shia, we believe, no, no, no. It's 1,000 verses of the Quran that are regarding the virtues of Imam Ali. Now, I feel like it is important to talk about Imam Ali and his relation with Rasulullah. What has Imam Ali done for our prophets? Well, the most number one event that should click in everybody's mind is Shab Hijrat. Now, in my lecture where we talked about Rasulullah, I gave a massive introduction and talk about Shab Hijrat. Today, our topic is Imam Ali, so I'm not gonna give a big introduction, but let me resume you what is Shab Hijrat. When the Quraysh, the non believers, they plotted to assassinate our Rasulullah, our Prophet, in his sleep. That is when our Prophet had to take the decision to escape from Mecca to Medina during nighttime. But for that, our Prophet asked Imam Ali to sleep on his bed. Imam Ali, the first thing he said was not, Oh Rasulullah, will I be safe? No, no. Imam Ali said, Oh Rasulullah, if I sleep on your bed tonight, will you be safe? This was the love Imam Ali had for our Prophet, that he was ready to sacrifice his life to save the life of the Prophet. Imam Ali on that night slept just like the Prophet did and when the Quraysh, the non-believers, they arrived, they were surprised to see that it was not Rasulullah who was sleeping, but it was Imam Ali who was sleeping in the position of Rasulullah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. But now let's keep going and let's talk about the fazail of Imam Ali which are very interesting. Imam Ali has always had a very high status in the eyes of the Shia for us Shia. He was the most pious and the most knowledgeable companion of the Prophet and of course he was the rightful successor of the Holy Prophet and there is no doubt that Imam Ali was the rightful successor right after our Holy Prophet. 
Because of his virtues, a number of the companions loved and were attached to Imam Ali. These people, these companions, they were called the Shi'ani Ali. At the time of our Prophet, at the time of our Prophet, a lot of people, a lot of companions, good companions, they loved the virtues, they loved the characteristics that Imam Ali had, and they loved Imam Ali. And those companions were classified, those companions, they were called Shi'ane Ali. However, the word Shi'a came to indicate those who consider Ali the rightful successor after Rasulullah. The word Shia means the people who consider Imam Ali the right after our prophet Imam Ali is the successor. Imam Ali, as I mentioned before, was born inside the Holy Kaaba in Mecca on the 13th of Rajab. On the 13th Rajab. In the 30th year after the year of the elephant. Imam Ali was born 13th of Rajab in the 30th year after the year of the elephant. 30 for those who don't understand. 30 years after the year of the elephants. His birth inside the Kaaba is widely accepted by all Shia scholars, including Sheikh al Saduq and Sayyid Razi. And of course, another majority of scholars also agree on this, and all other scholars in general. As we all know, unfortunately, our Prophet passed away on the 28th of Safar. And after his demise, the rightful successor of the Prophet and the leader of the Muslim community, according to us Shia, is Imam Ali. There is no doubt that it is Imam Ali, the rightful successor right after Rasulullah. However, my Azadah, this is very important to understand why we believe it's Ali, but why some believe it's not Ali. When Imam Ali was doing the funeral ceremony of our Prophet, not after, when, during Imam Ali, when Imam Ali was occupied with performing the burial, burial rituals and the ceremony of our Prophet's martyrdom, a group of companions at the same time, instead of paying their condolences to the family of Rasulullah, they gathered in a place called Sakifa and they decided that they wanted to hold an election. This was the first betrayal because on the day of Ghadir, our Prophet announced Man kunto mola fahaza ali mola. Our Prophet said, whoever I am the master, Ali is your master. There is no doubt that everybody heard that. All the companions, they were witnessed. They were witness that Rasulullah said this. But even though during the ceremony of the burial of our Prophet, during Instead of going to pay condolence or participate in the ceremony, they are holding an election in a place called Sakifa. They did not listen to the order of our Prophet. My Azada, this is during the ceremony of martyrdom of Rasulullah. They held an election and they decided to elect Abu Bakr as the Khalifa. They forced people to pledge allegiance to Abu Bakr. They forced Imam Ali, but Imam Ali, he refused. My Azadar, it is very important to know, never ever get confused when it comes to this. Imam Ali never pledged allegiance to Abu Bakr and he always refused. We should not even have a misunderstanding in this. One million percent Imam Ali, he refused to play, to, to, uh, to give allegiance, to pledge his allegiance to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr then decided that he wanted to confiscate Fidak. Baqi Fidak, which was a gift from our Prophet to his daughter Fatima as a victory of Khaybar. For those who don't know, when our Prophet was victorious of Khaybar, when Imam Ali and our Prophet they gained, they gained victory of Khaybar, our Prophet with the order of Allah gifted Baqi Fidak to his daughter Bibi Fatima. My Azadar, right after the martyrdom of our Prophet Abu Bakr, he came and he confiscated but Imam Ali, he went, he objected this decision in the defense of his wife, Bibi Fatima. And after that, do you want to know what else happens after we murdered him of our, of our Prophet? Right after we murdered him of our Prophet, there is an invasion in the house of Imam Ali, in the house of Bibi Fatima. They invade the house of Bibi Fatima, which means they destroy, they burn down, they forcefully enter the house of Fatima. My Azadar, listen cheerfully. Malakul Mot of Farishta, an Farishta, he asked permission to enter the house of Fatima. 
But my Azadar, on the other hand, we have Abu Bakr. Without permission, without anything, he bursts in the door. He invades the house of Fatima. He burns down the house. He burns down the door. He injures Fatima, which will be the cause of Bibi Fatima's martyrdom. And then that is also when our Bibi, our Bibi Fatima, she lost her baby. She lost her child, her baby, Hazrat Muhsin. It was a result from this attack that she lost Hazrat Muhsin. My Azadar, we need to understand that this event is right after the martyrdom of Rasulullah. During his ceremony, they hold an election. Then they confiscate Baghi Fidak. Then they steal the Abdak, the Khilafat. They refuse to believe Imam Ali was the successor, even though Rasulullah said on Eid Ghadir, Man kuntu mola fahaza Ali mola. And then they have an invasion in Bibi Fatima's house. They burn down the house, they burn down the door, they injure the daughter of Fatima. My Azadar, these companions, they call themselves the companions. But look at their actions right after the martyrdom of Rasulullah. We also need to understand that when Bibi Fatima was alive, Imam Ali, he did not marry another woman. Just like when Bibi Khatija was alive, our Prophet also didn't marry another woman, also didn't marry anyone else. Please recite a loud salawat before we continue. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. In all battles in which our Prophet was alive and was there, Imam Ali had always an influential role in all battles. Even battles in which the Prophet himself was also present. Imam Ali was the, the standard bearer, the alamdar in every battle of the Islamic army. In all battles, he represented the Islamic army. He remained with the prophets in battles that other Muslims escaped in fear and continued to fight. It is very important to know that in some battles of Islam, if we study deeper, inshallah, maybe we will have a series of lecture about these battles. But in some battles, the Muslim, they would run away out of fear, out of terror. But Imam Ali, he remained alongside with the Prophet and he did not leave the Prophet alone and he continued to fight. Now look, I can't, of course, I can't just tell you about all battles. So now I will give you a quick resume of some famous battles in Islam. The first battle being the Battle of Badr was the first battle between the Muslim and the idolaters of Mecca. It took place on the 17th of Ramadan, second after Hijrah. The second battle, as we all know, was the Battle of Ahad. And the third battle was the Battle of Ahzab. Now, I'm sure maybe you've never heard of this battle, but I'm sure if I say another name for this battle is jang i khandaq I am pretty sure all youth, all Azadar, have learned and have, have at least heard jang i khandaq Inshallah, as I said, if we have another series of lecture about the Jung, about the Battle of Islam, I will give a more bigger introduction. As I said, the third battle was the Battle of Ahzab, which is also known as Jang Khandak. And then we have the Battle of Khaybar. And once our Prophet was victor, once our Prophet and Imam Ali, they had victory over Khaybar, that is when our Prophet gave Baghi Fidak as a gift from the command of Allah to his daughter, Bibi Fatima. When our Imam, we need to understand, this could be a little confusing. For us, Imam Ali is the first Caliph. But now, when Imam became the fourth caliph, what I mean by this is, when Imam was widely accepted by everybody, he was the fourth caliph for them, but for us, he was the first caliph. So don't get confused. So when our Imam, for them, became the fourth khalifa, there were a lot and a lot of battles. Now, these battles are after the martyrdom of Rasulullah. I can tell you many such as the Battle of Jamal, Sifin, and the Battle of Naharwan. My Azada, the Battle of Jamal was the battle where Aisha, she herself, she came to fight Imam Ali. Now, if we talk... Now, I don't have time, a lot of time, because I try to keep these lectures simple. But in the future, when I give a massive introduction about Dang Jang -e Jamal, I will tell more briefly what happened on that battle. But for now, it is important to know that during the Battle of Jamal, Aisha, she herself, she came to fight Imam Ali. But now, let's move on towards the martyrdom of Imam Ali. 
on the eve of the 19th, 19th of Ramadan, 40 after Hijrah. Imam Ali, he went to Masjid Kufa to lead the morning prayer Fajr. When Mola entered, he saw Ibn Muljim. He was, Ibn Muljim also happened to be there. He woke Ibn Muljim up to alert him that it was time for the morning prayer. Mola, he then gave the call to the prayer, the Azan, and then he began to lead the prayer. My Azadar on the first Sajda of the first Rakat, when Mola began lifting his head from Sajda, Ibn Muljim, he took a heavy stroke with his poisoned sword, inflicting a deep wound on the heads of Imam Ali. At that moment, all the sons of Imam Ali were present. Then they helped to bring Imam Ali to his house. The sons of Imam Ali, they helped to bring Imam Ali to his house. And then on the 21st of Ramadan, our Mola, he was murdered. But my Azadal, before that, Mola began, <coughs> Mola began telling all of his whales, all of his advice. He explained the way of his burial, ablution, shroud, and the performing of prayer over his body. He also asked Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain, do not mutilate the body of Ibn Muljim and strike him once. If he survives, let him free. My Azadar, Mola over here, just look, Imam Ali, he is showing mercy to his own killer. Look at the status of Imam Ali, that he is showing his mercy to his own own killer. Imam Ali, moreover, he emphasized in his final words on paying attention to the Quran, prayer, commanding good and forbidding evil, visiting the house of Allah, as well as fearing Allah, being organized, reconciliation, and caring for the orphans and the neighbors. These are some of the wills and advice Imam had for his family. Imam requested to be buried in Najaf and he is buried in Najaf. He is, his shrine is located in Najaf, close to Kufa, and each year it is visited by 100 of thousand of Azadar from all around the world. May Allah give us tawfiq to visit the holy shrine of Imam Ali, and may Allah increase our ma'rifat and love towards Imam Ali. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. My Azadar, I tried my best to give a decent brief introduction of our Imam, Imam Ali. These series of lectures, they are very important for our young youth so they can understand the lectures of our scholars, of our speakers. By understanding these small lectures, it will be more easy for our youth and Azadar to understand the lectures, the majalises of our orators, of our scholars. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad.